And as we look at this, I told you that uh, uh, the, the, the world and the people is not the problem, but it is us uh, as individuals. We are the problem. We are the ones that uh, all these things have to begin with us. And I, I, say, I, I say that, uh, and, and I can make it clear for you that uh, if uh, we just come out of revival a few weeks ago, and uh, if we desire to change the world, we cannot change the world if we cannot change ourselves. If we can't change our own way of thinking, our own attitude, understand the uh, be renewed in the spirit of your mind in verse 23. That's what the whole uh, message of, of both sermons today is going to be about, renewing the spirit of our mind, our thought process. The way we approach every situation. When all these things begin to happen, whenever you're uh, standing in a very crowded bus and nobody will let you or your kids sit down and there's a racial slur thrown your way, that should not offend us. You know why? Because we're above that. You know why? Because we're Christians. Do you know why? Because that, my friend, is what Jesus endured the entire time he walked upon this earth. We are not allowed to be offended. We are not allowed, if you will, stay with me. Don't look at me like I'm crazy this morning. I'm going to give you pure truth and you can like it or not. Either way, it's going to be given to you. To understand this, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord. This is the Lord's word. This is what's being written. This was the problem long ago. It's not the world. The people in the world are the same now as they was right here in the church in Ephesus. It is the same as it was at the day in the Ephesians as it is today in Tennessee. I will tell you the difference. I will go ahead and spoil the entire thing here for you, and I will give you the difference. The difference is, is the people who are truly rooted and founded in Christ. Not as many today. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth from this point on is what is being said. That from now on, from salvation forward, understand what we just said. From salvation forward, walk not as other Gentiles. Walk not as the rest of the world. I told you and give you one one small example that I told you we are not allowed to be offended. Church, if you truly have the love of Christ in your heart, you wouldn't be offended to begin with. You don't like that too much this morning, do you? It's all right. It's scripture, it's Bible. Read it, study it. Learn it. We don't have the luxury, we don't have the privilege to have these kind of feelings because we, brothers and sisters in Christ, we church members, we Christian people should have the love of God dwelling deep within our hearts. And when that happens, we will not walk as other Gentiles walk. We will not be fighting the same fights as other Gentiles fight. We may be fighting the same fight, but we're not going to be uh, necessarily from the same angle and the same side. We are not to walk in the world. Brother Melvin and brought out this morning that you cannot serve the world and serve God all at the same time. So you need to pick your battles and pick what it is that you want to fight for this morning, church. Do you want to fight for your opinion in the world or do you want to fight to make sure that the gospel is preached unto all nations? Pick one because you can't do them both. We must decide, as it says, henceforth, we must decide what's more important. Our selfish desires, our, the, the, our, our carnal desires, are the, the lusts of the flesh, the pride of life, or the gospel. We must decide what is more important. 
Because this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, in their own selfish lust and desires. You want to know what's wrong with the world? I done told you we are, right? I'm not saying we the church. I'm not saying we uh, the bride of Christ. I'm not saying this congregation. I'm saying we as individuals. Each individual person is what is wrong with the world. It's not one group of them. It's not one color of them. It's not one uh, uh, religion of them. It's not, it's not one uh, 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 bunch of people with the same belief. It is us as individuals. We are the problem. Because we walk as other Gentiles in the vanity of our own mind. And what we think, what we desire. I told you, we was in Disney. You don't understand, you're walking through a, a park with 500,000 people in it and there's five of us. And all we want to do is get from this side of the park to this side of the park. And there's all those people in between us. But all I am concerned about is me and our family getting to we can have fun. You understand that this is the vanity of our own mind. We're not concerned about everybody else in amongst us. Do you understand that it is by those selfish desires? And I'm just using our vacation here as a mere picture, as a, as a broader picture of what you face in your daily life. We are only concerned with this much of our surroundings. We are only concerned with our personal space. Your personal space is what you can touch with your hand. In this, in this, all this direction, this is all we are concerned with. What affects us in the here and now. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened. If you go back into the second chapter of the book of Romans, you can look at the world and you can truly say that there has been people that has been turned over to a reprobate mind. Amen? Amen. Having the understanding darkened. You know, Christian people, this can happen to you and I. Our understanding can become darkened. We can be alienated from the life of God. We can be uh, uh, separated in fellowship. I'm not saying separated from the love. I understand that. We're not talking security. We're not talking uh, 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 eternal here. All I'm talking about is fellowship, friendship, daily walk, conversation, all these things. What we're talking about, we can get separated from God. Because God is leading us this way and we decide to walk this way. Amen? Having the understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. If our hearts are blind, it's because there's no love in it. Understand what, what was just said. Understand the magnitude, the depth, and truly think upon what was just stated there. If our hearts are blind, it's because there's no love there in it. Understand that if you get into the book of 1 John, into the different places of the Bible, we're going to be taught, uh, we're going to be taught through the God's Word that if we hate our brethren, the love of God is not in us. If we hate our brethren, we are guilty of murder. How many of us deserve to be serving a life sentence here this morning? Triple, quadruple homicide. Mass shootings. Hey, these are all things that are prominent in the news here this morning. In, 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 our, in our world today, I mean, is it not something that's, that's uh, really kind of taking hold upon our society? How many of us are guilty of the exact same things by hatred? Because society and certain uh, groups of people will teach you to hate another group of people. That is mass murder. That is genocide, if you will. We all have our feelings about Hitler, amen? We are just as guilty as he is if we hate an entire group of people. Because you need to understand that Christ died for them too. 
We are not to walk the same direction, the same way as other Gentiles walk. I don't care what this group of people's doing. I don't care what this church is doing. I don't care what these people are doing. We are to walk in a renewed sense in our minds. That the only thing that matters is Christ. Who being past feeling, giving over to that reprobate mind, past feeling, being callous, being hard-hearted, being cold-hearted. Giving themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. All uncleanliness. We're talking about lasciviousness. We don't have to be talking about uh, uh, sexual sins. We don't have to be talking about the things that concern the body. It said all uncleanliness and greediness. And they don't even have to be greed as far as just being about money. It can be greed about being just about ourselves. Our own personal gain. Uh, whether it be by wealth, whether it be by fame, whether it be by popularity, whether it be uh, no, no matter what it is. If these are the reasons why we are doing works, we are already walking with the other Gentiles. If we do things because we think we should do them, well, it's Sunday night. I ought to go back to church. That's no reason to go. Fair enough. It's Sunday morning. I ought to go to church today. Hey, that is no reason for you to go. Do you understand what I'm saying to you this morning? That just because we think or we feel that we should do it, that is not why we should do it. If we think, well, I ought to love my brother, and so I'm going to try it, that is no reason to do it. We should do it because God commands us to do it, and we desire to keep His commandments and to stay in fellowship therewith. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. Do you remember two weeks ago, we was in the third chapter of the book of Colossians, and it says, if ye then be dead with Christ, if ye then be risen with Christ, it was that question of if. We find the same question here this morning. If. So be that you have heard of him. If you have been called by a higher calling. If you have chosen to walk in a divine pathway. Let me tell you what the most magnificent thing about your eternal self and your eternal being is. You choose it. We were all foreordained to be sons and daughters of God. Understand that. That was the plan. That was the design from the beginning that we were all foreordained unto good works. We were all made in the image of God. All of us were made in the image of God, so we were all made to be saved, to be redeemed, to be justified, and to be resurrected in the last day. We were all made for that purpose. But we had to choose whether or not to do it. Amen. You had to make the decision, well... Self, do I want to go to hell or do I want to go to heaven? Do I want to spend an eternity in a flame in a place where the worm dieth not or do I want to spend an eternity in the presence of God Almighty? You had to choose. And if you chose heaven, then you choose, chose everything that came with it. You already chose that you cannot walk as other Gentiles walk. You already made your mind up at how you can feel. If you don't believe me, read and study the Word of God. Because... 
Let's start looking at some of this, shall we? Understand that I told you verse 23 is what the whole thing is going to be about. The renewing and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now turn with me to the book of Colossians in the third chapter in the 10th verse. It says, and have put on the new man which is renewed. There's our word again, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Our mind is not to be our mind. Our mind is to be renewed as the mind of Christ. Wow. Understand that. You remember when I told you that we are not allowed to feel that way? I want you to go back and I want you to go back into the trial of Jesus. I want you to go back into when he was having to bear his cross up Calvary's hill. I want you to go back and when all the sins of the world was put upon him. I need you to go back into when they drove the nails into his hands. I want you to go back to that and I want you to ask yourself, was he allowed to feel sorry for himself? Was he allowed to hate the people who did it? What did he do? Do you remember back in the late 90s, all the little bracelets that people wore that said WWJD, what would Jesus do? Do you remember those? Have you ever honestly thought to ask yourself in a situation, what would Jesus do? I can tell you what he would do. He would have compassion upon his brother. I can tell you what he'd do. He would love his brother. He would stick his hand out and help them. He would not stick his nose up and walk by. He wouldn't go forth into the church to do things for his own self-will and his own self-glory. He would do things, get this, because he said it many times so that his father could receive the glory. We are not allowed to do these things. We are not to walk as other Gentiles walk. We are to be renewed in the knowledge of of God. That means we are not allowed as Christian people to have uh, each night dedicated to a TV show. We're not allowed to do that. We are not allowed to spend our Sundays, well, I don't really want to go to church today. I would rather go do this. We're not allowed to do those things. We are commanded to be renewed in the knowledge. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. Show of hands, are you approved this morning? How many approved workmen do we have in the church house this morning? Let's just say that Christ descends from these ceiling tiles and he puts forth his hands and he says, I need this church to go forth into this community to every door, to knock on every door, to speak to every person and tell them how to be saved. Are you an approved workman? Could you do that simple task? Could you take your Bible that you either brought or forgot this morning, could you take that into some, into some lost soul's door to knock upon it and say, this is how you are to be saved? Could you do that? Could you take it? Could you take your Bible? Could you present it to a lost soul and say, this is the truth. This shows you that there is a hell. This shows you how to be saved. If you can't do that, you are not an approved workman and you are not allowed to have me time. You understand that this morning? You understand that we are bound by divine laws of what we can and can't do. Also understand that this is all self-will things. You get to choose it. But I'm telling you, by what you chose, your mind should already be made up. Now, if you skip down in the, uh, third, uh, in the third chapter of the book of Colossians, it says in verse 15, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. If we allow the peace of God to rule in our hearts, then I assure you we won't even desire to walk as the rest of the world walks. I 
I got to listen to enough for Brother Eric's morning sermon uh, last week that uh, they were talking about uh, uh, they were not allowed to have doubts. I don't know if any of you guys remember that. But we're, uh, he's talking about, he was reading a devotion, it's called Outlaw Bible, the things that we uh, imagine that we're not allowed to do. And we, we, we base these things upon our doubts. And Brother Melvin already brought out this morning uh, that we can begin to believe our doubts and to doubt our beliefs. I need you to understand that this is the devil's fuel. This is what he runs on. Some of us may run on Duncan. Well, the devil runs upon doubts. That fuels him. When we have doubts about our church, when we have doubts about our salvation, when we have doubts about our calling, when we have doubts about the way we feel towards other people, that is not of God, ladies and gentlemen. Brothers and sisters, that is not from above. All good and perfect things come from above, not doubts and, 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 and uh, 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 selfish thoughts and hatred. Those things do not come from above. But it says, let the peace of God rule in our hearts. It's hot in here this morning. Going all the way back into the book of Ephesians. It says we are not allowed to walk as other Gentiles walk. Cannot stress that enough. But coming on down into verse 23, it says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Does the Bible not teach us to be ye holy for I am holy? It's time for a test here at Oakdale. It's time for our exam, if you will. Based upon that sentence, be ye holy, for I am holy. Walk not as other Gentiles walk, but be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. Would any of us pass that test? Have any of us truly put on the new man? And by putting on the new man, hey, we're going to get to this verse eventually. Well, we can just skip on down and read it. It says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit. How many of us truly grieve the Holy Spirit every time we open our eyes? If we refuse to put on the new man... If we refuse to do what uh, the book of uh, Philippians, I think it's uh, maybe verse 1, chapter 1, verse 6, or chapter 2, verse 6, but uh, not allowing uh, uh, the, the good work which He has started in us, not allowing the, the Holy Spirit to truly take hold onto our lives. If we refuse that, we are grieving the Holy Spirit. About a year or so ago, we had, I think, a seven-part uh, series upon sins against the Spirit. This was one of them, grieving the Spirit, refusing to turn loose and allowing the Spirit to reign prominently in our lives. That you put off concerning the former conversation in the old man, the former ways. Church, I need you to understand as born-again believers, as Christian people who are uh, uh, faithful to church, who are people who are, who are faithful in giving their tithes, faithful in wanting to help, all these things don't matter if you refuse to put off the old man. Because you are refusing to become who God desires you to be. I want you to understand, God loves you just the way you are. He died for you just the way you are. But that's not the way He wants to leave you. Amen. He died for you and He'll save you just the way you are, but that's not good enough for Him. He wants to change you into something magnificent. He wants to make you great. He wants to make you holy. He desires for you to be just like His Son in whom He said, when the voice descended from heaven, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That is what He wants to say to you.
Turn with me to the book of Titus, quickly. Quickly to the uh, third chapter of the book of Titus, it says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. This is a book that, again, is written to the born-again believers. This is not written to the lost people. This is written to the church. This is written uh, to Christian people. This is saying that, hey, we was once in this shape. I need you to understand that at, at some point we did walk as other Gentiles walk, but I need you to understand that this was all past tense this was all in a previous being it says for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish but then it goes on in the verse 4 it says but after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared it means after we got saved these things changed there was a renewing of our mind there was a different thought process 